Hola, Whiskey Ginger fans. What is up? It's the Red Rocket. If you want to come see the Red Rocket live, look, I've got a host of tour dates coming up, coming to hit you in the face of 2020. The Red Rocket Tour is here, baby. You want to have a nice little stocking stuffer for someone that you know, go ahead and grab some Red Rocket tickets. Uh, throw them in there. We're going to a ton of cities. Look at this is the art right here. This is the incredible, beautiful Red Rocket art. Uh, the In January, we're going to be in Edmonton. Uh, then I'm going to be in Denver, Colorado at Comedy Works, doing one of my favorite clubs that's ever existed in downtown. Come out and see me in Edmonton and then in Denver. Um, and then in February, March, April, and May, we're all over the place. Where am I going to? It's right there. It's listed on andrewsantino.com. We're going everywhere. Madison, Minnesota, you know, we're going to Atlanta, we're going to Portland, Seattle, we're going everywhere. Uh, so go to andrewsantino.com for tickets, check me out. We have some other great, amazing news to deliver to you outside of that. You guys, we're starting a Patreon. We're going to put the Patreon link below. Um, I'm so excited. There's going to be one-on-one -on -one Cheeto Chats with fans. We're going to be interacting solely with fans. I'm going to do one-on-one -on -one solo episodes in there. There's going to be a ton of different tiers that you can get involved in um, because it's just going to create an opportunity for me to link more with fans. Instead of doing the guest episodes, I think the solo episodes are going to live only on the Patreon, I believe, from now on. People tend to like that. I can get more interactive with you guys. We can have full-on conversations. I won't give you a fake text number like Chips Delano. I'm going to give you the straight-up email address that we can hit each other back and forth. And maybe, maybe we might video chat. Um, that's something we're working on right now. So I'm excited for that. Please subscribe, you guys. Tell everyone about the show. Spread that love. Spread that word. Um, because it means a lot to us. And I also want to announce today... We got merch. Look at the merch. You like it, the merch? You like it, the merch? We got some merch, man. I'm so excited. Um, I'm so excited that we're finally releasing this stuff. It's incredible. We have t-shirts. We got hats. We got beanies. We got hoodies. What do you need, dude? We got Red Rocket, Cheeto Santino gear. Everyone's been asking me for merch. You've been begging for merch. You guys are like, when are you going to make a t-shirt? Dude, we made a ton of t-shirts and a ton of stuff. If you don't buy this shit, I'm going to be livid. This is perfect stocking stuff for stuff. This is great for putting under the tree for someone that you love, uh, a whiskey ginger fan. Uh, so get them that stuff. You guys have some fun. Uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, Feliz Navidad. Happy Holidays. Whatever it is. In the meantime, enjoy the episode. This episode of Whiskey Ginger is brought to you by Buffalo Trace. The Buff Trace be the only bourbon with balls. Dude, we've talked about this on the show before. I drink Buffalo Trace. I enjoy it. I give it to my guests. Some of the good guests get the good stuff. You know, some of the shitty guests get the shitty stuff. <laughs> and Buffalo Trace doesn't make shitty stuff. I give them plastic bottle stuff. But um, Buffalo Trace uh, is the only bourbon with balls that we talk about. It's right there on the cover. 1773, they've been making original jazz of their own, in their own way. Fiercely independent. Uh, Harlan Wheatley's down there making some funky stuff, man. He's trying out all sorts of stuff. I think they're doing tequila now, including vodka and a host of other incredible uh, infusions of the whiskey kind, Mr. Bourbon. So um, pick up a bottle of Buffalo Trace. I, I highly support it. I've told you that. Tweet at me. Let me know that you're drinking it responsibly over 21. If you're under 21, don't send me those photos. I don't want to see them. I don't want to get caught by the cops. Uh, but please uh, enjoy yourself a bottle of Buffalo Trace or Blanton's or Eagle Rare, or if you can get your little fingers on some Pappy, go ahead and do it. There's a spot by my house, a bar that sells it for $65 per ounce, so it's a little pricey, but Buffalo Trace is incredible, man. They don't let anybody push them around. That's kind of how we are here at Whiskey Ginger. You know, we do it our way. We like to be independent. You know, we like to buck up with people that buck up with us, and so please support Buffalo Trace because they support us. We, we really appreciate them this holiday season. Get someone you know lit up on Buff Trace at your house. Don't drink and drive. Take a nap. Pull out the pull-out couch. Grab a pillow and a blanket. Cozy up near the fire. Grab some Buffalo Trace. Have yourself a good holiday, baby. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the Gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. Truly is Mr. Dan Soder. Dan. Hey. Hi. Dude, thanks for coming. Hi. Came to the house on a great day. Lovely home. Yeah, Lovely thank backyard. Thank you. Appreciate it. But unfortunately, we got a fucking leak in the roof because of the rain because it's bullshit in LA and doesn't fucking rain and they don't know how to handle rain. They really lock Could up. You You're imagine? a Chicago kid, right? Yeah. And I think Chicago... I'm from Colorado, and it's yeah. a similar mentality of like when terrible weather hits, it's like, put on your chains. 
Yeah, it's get big. up to the high road in Colorado and Chicago. You're like, well, of course there's ten feet of snow. Yes, just, this is in. just a part of what happens. Yeah, we're gonna drive into the town. You're gonna put your damn chains on your tires. <laughs> my my mom uh, my mom used to uh, uh, cause I had an old rear wheel drive car. Yeah, and so my mom every time it got a little snowy was like so worried I was gonna die in a fiery wreck. She was like. Put the bags of sand in the trunk because we have bags of sand. Dude, we had bags <laughs> yeah, of sand to yeah, weigh down the butt yeah, of the car. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. So I wouldn't fucking real, real. fish tail out yeah. and crash into something. But it's it's so funny to think about. <laughs> what here, a great sentence. Put the bags of sand in the trunk. And I wouldn't do it because I'd, I'd, be, I'd be like, I don't fuck. I don't care. I'm, I'm a fine. bad boy. Yeah, Let I'm, this ass slide. I'm going to fucking roll through it, bitch. Let this ass slide around. But it was always like the, I, I hated lugging the sand in and out of the fucking trunk of the car. It was so annoying. And then you let it sit in there. And then inevitably, every winter, a bag would break just because of the wear and tear. It would crack, and then it'd be sand in the trunk of the fucking car, and I'd have to get it out. So I didn't want to put it in because I was like, I don't want to lug these 50-pound bags of sand in and out of this fucking car. Yeah. So I was like, I'm not going to do it. And so what I would do is I would sit at a stoplight or a stop sign for an inordinate amount of time, just spinning out the whole time, <laughs> loving it. Yeah, I would love it. <laughs> and then the car behind me like, man, man, man. I'm like, come on, come on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. I get it. And you do the thing where it goes, <laughs> but when it catches, it goes, <laughs> yeah, when it catches, it's good. Dude, I know about that. So my mom had a uh, 91 Toyota 4Runner. And Fuck yeah, the 4Runner is a great car, by the way. By the way, sticks with it. Yeah. Got a 4Runner it's, it's a phenomenal car, man. Dude, it really my mom, is. My mom got in a car accident about three years ago. She got... Uh, hit head on a guy had a heart attack and died and came through the cross uh, oh my god and hit her and my mom's so tough that she just walked away like the terminator like just kicked the door <laughs> off and they're like miss are you all right it's like dun, 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 dun. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. my da- my little boy's name is danny he's a comedian in he's new a york comedian. city you're gonna meet him one day have you seen this boy he's got a, you know <laughs> it was she, but she got out and i was like well we have to get you a new car and she's like i want a forerunner and you're like what was the old car, by the way? Do you remember? Runner. Oh, it was another Forerunner. She stayed Forerunner. Oh, shit. A 91 and then bought like in 06, bought a 98 and then had that 98 until 2017. No way. Yeah. That's a deep cut. That's Did a hard car to keep for that 230,000 miles. Damn. And never had to change anything out of it, though? I mean, yeah, it had to do some work. Yeah, but I mean, but you never had to replace an engine, though. No. Same engine. I'm pretty, yeah, two. Yeah, because that's re- that's a long time to go. Toyota, Once you get man. to a quarter of a million, you're like you're tiptoeing on. Can't go too much. Further. Honda Accords can blow by it. Different story, man. Honda Accords are built differently. They're, they're just fucking. They're, 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 built they, I don't know what it is. We became bro. dads with yeah. that one sentence. He's <laughs> go. Accords, yeah, they're built uh, differently. That thing's built they differently. They can last. That thing's they gonna can go last. for it. Put sand in your truck. <laughs> but uh, my mom, my friend Zach's uh, mom was a flight attendant for Frontier, and there was a blizzard, and Zach was like. He had a blazer, but his blazer was in the shop. And he's like, hey, I man. I love can you... Chevy blazers, man. Yeah, I used to love great. those fucking cars. Love them. Cool guys had Chevy blazers, man. Good dude. Zach was a cool dude. Yeah. And uh, he is a cool dude. And we got in. So he called me. He's like, hey, man, my mom is at DIA and it's a snowstorm. It was a blizzard. Could you drive me out there to, like, you know, pick up my mom? And I was like, yeah, sure, dude. And I asked my mom, and she's like, you can use the Forerunner, but just, like, look out. You know, it's ice. So you always know, like, hit gas, don't hit brake. I'm like, I got it. I did, like, that teenage thing where I'm like, Mom, shut up. I don't need to hear your advice, Mom. Dude, I turned the first corner, and I was driving <laughs> up a hill, and I just hit ice, and I was just like, no, 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 no. <laughs> and just into a parked car, and you're like, boosh. Yeah. That was the first one, right? Right. I had to go find the guy's truck, because I hit a guy's truck. Mm. He was in these townhomes by my house. I go in, I find the guy, I get his info. I, I, you know, there's no cell phones. I gotta call Zach's right. house and be like, house I'm still phone. coming. House still coming phone. to pick you up. I pick him up. Dude, driving to get his mom and back, we hit ice and slid into the barricade six times. What? My mom thinks I only got the one accident. One accident. <laughs> and you come back <laughs> and both sides are dinged up. And I'm like, yeah, it was just that one up there. Because I called her when I hit that been the guy. Snow man, I don't know what it was. Could have just been the wind. No, maybe? I think I hit and I turned and then that hit and then I turned again and I hit. And I <laughs> you hit, just three, just one eighty hits on all sides. But she was like, "Okay, all right. Well, I'm glad you're safe." And you're so I'm like, "I fucked your shit. I fucked your car up so bad. so bad." Yeah, dude. I, I, well, I mean, at at some point when you live in a part of a country in, in a part a part of the country where 
snow damages vehicles, yeah. people don't care as much. Like at California, if, if there's like a mini little scratch, people see it because there's nothing to impede upon that. Like it's that's what's going to happen. Yeah. But in the Midwest, bumpers are bumpers. That's part of the thing. It's like yeah, there's dents and bumpers. That's what a bumper. A bump, it's called bumper to bump. Bump other cars. That's yeah. why we call it a bumper. It's like oh, I bumped on my bump. But it's so funny how when you leave the Midwest and you, I can't come to the West Coast. If someone tapped you, that's that is like grounds for lawsuits. That's yeah. like I will fucking. Well, I think Los Angeles is an especially litigative. Oh my god, come they on. just love to litigate. We're the here. worst of the worst of the worst. Uh, maybe San Francisco might be worse. Well, San Francisco, they passively aggressive. They go, yeah, you hit me, and I and, think my neck might. And be I'm hurt. okay with hitting because I mean I get it. I understand that. I don't know why you have to drive that car. And honestly, even thinking about that hurts my neck more. <laughs> Uh, you should probably talk to my lawyer. His name is Mark Greenblade. He's uh, Greenblade. Yeah, he's, 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 so I was going to go hippie and say uh, grass blade, but grass dude, blade would have worked. L.A. I think there's people who like wait to get in accidents. They're just like fuck yes. Well, the problem with L.A. is most people in L.A. don't have insurance because I think people drive from all over the country. They come from everywhere. People don't have insurance here, man. A lot of people don't have insurance in this fucking. State. Which is weird because you're always like. They tell you, like, drive with insurance. You have to drive with insurance. And then I've heard so many stories of friends getting in accidents with people, and they're like, I don't have insurance. I don't have insurance. Bro, I've been pulled over in this in this city probably a dozen times since I've lived here. Never once have I been asked for my insurance. A license and registration. I give it to them. Like, you have insurance? I go, yeah. And I do have always had it. Sure. They've never cared. Midwest, you need insurance. You can't fuck around. A winner, a winner city, you 100% have to have you car insurance. You can't. Fuck. Because you're going to take bumps. I think my mom got her car fixed for like 78 bucks. Also, I guess growing up in the middle, cars got stolen all the time. One of the worst stories of my entire childhood that traumatized me, my mother was coming to pick me up from after school daycare. Was it at, where was it at? In downtown Chicago. No, but where was the daycare? Was it like an actual daycare or was it like an athletic center like I went to? In the basement of an apartment building. Got it. <laughs> You got it. It was a couple uh, of apathetic teenagers yeah, yeah. and a really old lady. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One oh, super old lady. Yep. Nancy was ours. Nance? It was uh, Nance? Yeah. One super old lady. Oh, by the big way. Big ass legs. I haven't thought of that woman in forever. Summertime would come and she'd put on these shorts and she just had these massive Cats? tan thighs. Oh, like thighs. Fucking golden ham hocks. <laughs> and she was, but was it sexy to you as a kid? No. No, you were turned off? Dinosaur like. See, it's funny because sometimes old big women like that make turn me the fuck on. You get blood going? Just because I'm like, this this big bitch can fucking handle it's life. It's like a bowl. Yeah, she fucks with life. I like a sturdy woman. Yeah, she can. She hunkers down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Dude, I've always, she does that, she does that, uh, that the, Maori fucking. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, I like a nice. The all blacks? I like yeah. a Viking queen body. Yeah, that's what. That, the the two people so so in the daycare my mother came to pick me up uh, in the basement of this old apartment building and she left the car running outside because it was fu- it had been freezing in the middle of dead middle of winter and here's how I know it's the middle of winter my Christmas presents were in the trunk of the fucking car single mother working mother she put the presents in the car and oh. the car got fucking jacked dude like got stolen within seconds she came inside came to get me I was watching a movie she was trying to like organize me and talk to the people sign out. Yeah, dude, and the car got stolen with the oh. kids in the trunk. This is the most fucked part of the whole thing. I was so sad. Uh, my mother never told me till years later that my trunks, my presents were in the trunk. I was so hurt that the car got stolen because I felt bad for my mother because I could tell it fucked her up. And I was sitting in her bed at night. We were sitting in, uh, it was a uh, two-bedroom apartment. Yeah. Uh, and I was sitting in her bed uh, in her room because I felt awful for her and I was sitting there really sad and we got a phone call from the Chicago police and the Chicago police were like uh, is this uh, is this Maureen? Yeah, we found your car. It's on the Dan Ryan and my mother was like oh my god, you, you found the vehicle? Um, I mean, what, you know, like is there anything left over in the car? And the guy's like no. Also, there's no tires on it and the glove compartment's been totally demolished. Like they had broke the, lo- she, you know, the lo- oh, you would lock a glove compartment. Yeah. They had cracked it and taken it. So my mother was like, they were like, we can either, we can either have you tow, you tow it to wherever <laughs> you want it or we tow it to our yard. You got to pay for it. And my mom was like, the tires are gone and it's all fucking, they were like, yeah. And she was like, fucking taken. So they just scrapped it. They took the fucking car because it was worth nothing. I mean, it was like a uh, piece of shit is an understatement. Yeah. It, it was past a piece of shit. I got a, I got my car taken when I got robbed in Tucson and when they called me. You got robbed? What do you got robbed at gunpoint in Tucson? Yeah, I lived with a weed dealer. And, oh. Uh, I did it. I told that story on this not happening and Ari was like, 
I did like the live show. He's mm-hmm. like, God, I worked that shit out, which is, uh, but I got my cart stolen and I had six loads of laundry and I had all my clothes. I had like my towels. Oh, shit. I had my backpack with all my books for school. Oh, was, fuck. That's money, a, by the way. That's legit money. It's probably six hundred dollars a semester. Yeah, that's so fucked up for fucking journalism law. Books? Bullshit. Yeah, journalism. Bullshit. Journalism. Hey! Bullshit. Bullshit. Books. If it bleeds a lot. If yeah. it bleeds, it leads. Uh, <laughs> don't get buried in a lead. We know all our terms. Oh my god. This guy knows. I know how hard I almost failed. I yeah. know. Yeah, I, I remember. So I um I have my backpack your in there. Laundry. Your backpack. Like your life is in the fucking hundred disc CD book. Bro. The hits. A lot of burns. I'm going to say, but, all, all Eyes on Me is in there. Both discs. <laughs> For uh, sure. Uh, both discs. Ready to Die is in there. A little No Doubt Tragic Kingdom probably yeah, thrown in there 100%. on accident. You know what I mean? I'll even throw in Blues Traveler 4. Come on, bro. With the cat with the green, smoking? I the love green, it. The green Had TV. it. Had it. What about, oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's deep dive for a second. Let's Hootie and the Blowfish. Hootie One. and the Blowfish for sure. Do you have President's United States of America? Yeah. Millions lump. of peaches. Got the lump up in that motherfucker. Yeah. What else could have been in that category of size? That- Nirvana, never mind, for oh. sure. Well, that's, that nah. is such a staple. Yeah. Pearl Jam? Were you a Pearl Jam guy? Yeah, I had 10 Vitology and... Uh, what was the other one? I'm trying to see it in my head right now. Vitology was great because it had... I think I had a live album. They had... No, they did have a live album. Yeah. But there was one more studio album that they did. Those are the ones I had. That was heavy. That was in the book. Dude, I want to get back to this in two seconds. Finish the story because I have to... Now I, I want to talk music right after this. Okay. So you're, all your shit's in there. The 100 CD disc. And then they there. call me. I was at a bar with my friend Calvin. Mm. And they're like, hey, it's Tucson Police Department. We found your car. And I was like, oh. And they're like, it's uh, running, but there's nothing inside it. And I was like, what do you mean there's nothing inside it? They took everything out of the console. Fuck. Like they took everything out and they took everything out of the middle. And it was just like, it cost me like, I I knew a guy that listened to the radio station I worked at. What kind of car was it, by the way? 1996 Dodge Stratus. The Stratus. I drive a Dodge Stratus. I drive a Dodge Dodge Stratus. Stratus. That was my rejoiner at KFMA where it'd be like, you're listening to Scared Dan. I drive a Dodge Stratus. <laughs> it's 92.1 and 101.3 KFMA. And then I'd go into like, what? Yeah, it'd just be like Blind Melon. <laughs> oh, man, I think. And, um, but yeah, they called me and there was like, there's nothing in there. And you're like, so the, the feeling your mom had had to be so much worse because you're like, also single mom you're like those were presents it was, was well I, I didn't learn that till much later that was the, that was the whole thing with my did mom did you ask her what presents they were? yeah you know what's so fucked up about this ugh this is hurtful this hurts my heart to know she had to ask my grandfather rest in peace coolest fucking motherfucker who ever lived on this earth to get a little bit of money to rebuy some of the gifts yeah it was fucked do yeah. you remember what the gifts were uh, I've actually, yes, I fucking, I remember the most important gift, the one that really like, like ch- the one that I wanted was the, uh, Ecto one Ghostbusters car. I remember it, dude. I love that fucking thing. I love the Ecto one so fucking much. Uh, you know what version I of wish that? as my, an adult, I was like, why can't I buy an Ecto one? I, uh, my version of that mm-hmm. was my, da- I had Christmas with my dad in 1990. When did your dad pass away? What year? 97. 97. Uh, I had Christmas with my dad in San Francisco in 1990. And he was like, don't bring in, I call my action figures my guys. He was like, don't, don't bring, bring any, the guys. He goes, don't bring any guys. And I go, I should probably bring a couple guys. And he's like, no, don't bring any guys. <laughs> and he's like, no, I, this is exactly what he said. He goes, make sure you bring your Ninja Turtle guys. Yes. Like, bring your Ninja Turtle guys. They're, and I was they're like, coming, I promise. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> it was going to be WWF and Ninja Turtle. <laughs> I was going to leave the X Men at home, let them cook, you know. Let them chill. Build up some storylines. It's a night off for those guys. Come back to Wolverine 2, the yellow and blue one, and have a different storyline. So dope. They <laughs> it, took a bye week. They took a bye week. Yeah. And I went to my, my dad's house in San Francisco with my Ninja Turtle guys. This motherfucker. <laughs> Gary Soder, mm-hmm. not paying child support, being a real shitty, real Gary, about real it. Gary, real right Gary now, about it. Drops Shredder's Cadillac <sighs> and the Ninja Turtle van. Fuck off! Are you out of your head and, right now? And a Hot Licks guitar. Well, that's why he saved all that money from fucking. <laughs> Dude, he, was just like, he goes, "I'm gonna make a count." He did the he did the William Wallace hold. My mom's like, "Where's the money, Gary?" He's like, "Hold." Hold. All right, you get Dan for Christmas this year. Hold no! on. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> Dude, that's incredible. The, the the van was so fucking dope. And he that led so with the cool. Cadillac. My dad pulled some dope toy moves. Uh, Wait, t- sidestep. Did you have 
did you have Splinter? Uh, Never got you, Splinter. Isn't that funny that no one... Never ever got Splinter. Sh- dude, shout out to Splinter. Nobody shout out Splinter for staying Splinter. elusive. For real though, nobody fucked with him because I, of course I had Shredder, of course I had all the... Uh, of course, I, By the way, I had Bebop and, uh, Bebop and Rocksteady, but it was like, why didn't I, why didn't I ever get a Splinter? I never got... I, Me neither. Nobody wanted to rap. He even had a cloth robe. I know, but I yeah. couldn't fuck with it. So when Tim Burton's Batman came out, they but came out with the action mean, figures. You mean the only Batman that I've ever made? I'm I mean, sorry. I'm a Nolan guy, so we could go tip I just, chat on I this. I just think, I just think what he did yeah. define look, you may not agree that Michael Jordan's the best basketball player of all time. Some people don't think so. Sure. Okay. But what he did to basketball changed it forever. Tim Burton did that to Batman. That's how I feel about yes. Tim Burton. He set the tone. Forever and ever. As they say in football when you make a big hit, go set the tone. Go set the tone. He set the tone. Let him fucking know. Let him know. Okay. And Tim Burton let these motherfuckers he did, know. bro. Especially with Keaton as Batman. Mm. Keaton is my Batman. The coldest motherfucker. His mouth looked like what I thought Batman was going to look like. It was perfect. I go, that's Batman's mouth. That's Batman. That's exactly I remember what being the kid and being like, that's yeah. Batman's mouth. <laughs> yeah. That's what Batman's mouth looks like. Um, and so they came out with the action figures. Mm-hmm. Uh, my dad was still living in Denver. So this is 89. And so I'm like, my dad, you know, he had like an apartment around the way. And he took me to Toys R Us. In the Batman, they had Joker and they had Bob. Oh, and yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Those oh, are yeah. the action figures they had. No yeah. Batman. And I was like, Damn. man. And my dad's like, let's get Bob and Joker. And then we'll wait. Okay. And you get Batman, Fine. you know? And that's like your rationing skills as a kid. You're like... It is two guys. It is two dudes. I still yeah, dig them. They're guys. still fun. Still All fun right. to party All with. All right. I can maybe tie in <laughs> one of my Justice League uh, figures. I can find that old Batman. And we go in the car, and I remember my dad was like, oh, what? What's this? And pulls out a Batman. And Fuck like, off. What? <laughs> Get it real, Oh, it. my God. You, that, that motherfucker. I was just visiting my grandmother last week for Thanksgiving, and I drove in Marin. There used to be a place called Toy World. Is it Marin County? Yeah, Marin County. Okay. There used to be a place called Toy World. Toy World. And that's where we would stop. My dad worked at a liquor store in Mill Valley. Oh, shit. And then my, uh, my grandma and him lived off Sir Francis Drake. So it was like an apartment off Sir Francis Drake. So we would go from Mill Valley. And then as we were going back to my grandma's apartment, he'd be like, take that exit. We'd go to the mall, go right to Toy World. And he'd mm. be like, what are we doing? Can what we, are we doing? What we, guys uh, are we getting? Like a mob, like a mob day. Yeah, that's like, like a. But what do you need? You want? You get it. Pick it up. Go mob ahead, dads it. and alcoholic dads act the exact same. He's like, I'm gonna get hammered. What piece of plastic can you play with while I pass out? <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> uh, maybe a Jim the Anvil Nightheart high energy WWF figure. You Let's got it. it. <laughs> Six bucks. I can get smashed tonight on the patio. <laughs> so he would, would. Would your father? Would your dad? He would supplement love with toys for sure. Yeah, that was his thing for sure. So my, I've talked about it before, but like my we we're cut from an oddly similar cloth. But my dad is alive, is alive. Uh, you know, I, it's so weird. I always say was an addict, but is an addict. I know how they do that thing with addicts. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. is was whatever whatever it was. He doesn't yeah. use anymore. It's been a long time. He's been sober for a long time. But that being said, um, with my dad was drug use, not booze. Okay. So I, we there was no, I never saw it or felt it. The one thing he was very conscious of was using was disconnected from me. Yeah. So that's what's interesting about like alcoholism tends to be one of those things where- you know, Both of my parents are alcoholics. Well, they'll do it with in front of people, with people. It doesn't matter because it's so socially acceptable. But you don't understand. It's so weird as a kid, probably by the time I was six, mm-hmm. I knew what getting drunk was. Of course. Right, cause, cause, but, well, but here's why though. But uh, My parents- and I didn't know this until I got older. Right. And you look back at your parents, because then I'm 36 right now. My Same. parents were 30. My mom was 35. My dad was 34 when they had me. I'm kind of like, you always wonder like, oh, that's mom and dad. That's my mom and my dad. And then they're older and you see them get older. And now my mom's 71. And, and you're like, oh, that's, she's a 71 year old woman. Mm-hmm. But now when I kind of know my mom and, and, and I've gone through my drinking problem and I knew how I behaved with alcohol, I'm like, oh, yeah. I know exactly who Trish and Gary were. Mm. They were the like, let's go get fucked up at Trish and Gary's. Right. And they would have cocktails. And by the way, not, it wasn't trashy. It was like kind of fun. It was there like, was, yeah, there was, it was a party. San Francisco it was in the a 70s party. and 80s. Fuck. 
there's I would party. Have, I would have loved to have seen that footage. Yeah, man, my mom said one of the funniest things when I was a teenager. She goes, one time your father and I did some cocaine so good that he wanted to go dancing. And, you're like, <laughs> and I was like, what? What? And you're like, oh, fuck. I didn't know. She was like, yeah, that's how good the coke was. And I was like, damn, because they lived Cause in Because Gary like, did not go dancing. Didn't smoke weed. Net didn't like weed, loved booze. Yeah. It would you have some toots once in a while. Yeah, but like toots of that era almost doesn't count. Do you know it what I mean? It doesn't count. It's, it's Adderall like, yeah. now. Meanwhile, my dad of that toots is what to, my dad that's, that's Mr. What Mr. Him? Toots, dude. Yeah, that's what caught him hard. Yeah. That's what en- ended him in prison and all that stuff there. Yeah. Jesus. The t- actually, this the sauce, the uh, the, iro- the ironic thing is I like alcohol. Uh I moderation type of shit but it's come from my irish side my father's italian santino that side um not a drink like nobody on that side drinks like not a one of so funny you say that my mom's family Mm. there's drinking problems but for the most part they drink yeah little to no effect problem wise sure my dad's family cirrhosis eliminated everything they're swedish wow Eliminated well, everybody. Sweet, dude, she, my, the old bag, the old ball and chain, <laughs> the old Hagrid over the her Swedish uh, lineage, they un, un, undeniably drink more than anybody could ever imagine. Swedish people get not enough credit. They're fucking party hounds, dude. Party hounds. People think like they're like Irish, Scottish, English, all this bullshit. Swedish people fucking rage. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you, you I'm know, telling you, man, my dad died rage. of cirrhosis at 48. My grandfather died of cirrhosis at like 62. His dad, dude, we're talking lineage. <laughs> if this was politics, I would be a dynasty baby. <laughs> You'd be like, I'm fucking. You'd have ran di- the country three times. Over. I had a joke along. I was doing this joke for a little bit on stage about how I was a third generation alcoholic. And it was like, my grandfather died of cirrhosis because he was good at drinking. My dad died at 48 because he was better at drinking. And that's too much pressure for a young alcoholic. I felt like Ken Griffey the third. <laughs> like, like, but that was You're like never a gonna real, be able to was, turn on a ball like that. That was a yeah. That was the joke I had where I was like, but I knew my dad was an alcoholic, so I didn't want to drink when I was a teenager because he died when I was fourteen. So uh, I was like, yo, fuck that shit. I'm not gonna drink alcohol that killed my dad. Right, right. I would smoke weed. I just smoked weed from fourteen, you know, on. Right. And then like seventeen or eighteen, started drinking. Social shit happens. Yeah, you start drinking. You go to house parties. You have a beer or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I can drink. Yeah. And you start ch- checking those limits and you're like, uh oh, <laughs> Danny's good at drinking. And I'm just fucking putting it back. Then I go to school at the University of Arizona, which is at sea level, and I'm coming from Colorado, so it's altitude. Oh shit. And so I go you down drink even more. Laying them out. You know I'm ASU, by the way. You know that, right? I didn't know you were a scum devil. Mm-hmm. Where did you graduate? Whatever, Mexico. I know. You know what I mean? That's what, yeah. They're both trash. Uh, Garbage. The for the whole work. state. Uh, uh, what year did you graduate? Same. We're the same age. Oh, five. Yeah, I'm 36. Yeah. So you were at age. ASU when I was at U of A. Yeah. We were rivals. Yeah. Well, I didn't pay enough attention. Me in neither. I yeah, hated that, it. See, that was the problem. I did stand up. Yeah. Well, my thing was... Um, we we had a fraternal system at ASU. So we, we had a massive Greek. Okay, life. so yours, but yours is real, right? Like you guys have Greek houses. So we used to have frat row that got shut down in two thousand and four because there was a porno. People can look this. up. I watched this porno with BB. Shane's BB, World was the name. Shane's of it. World. I used to Jo do. I Dude, mean, I still would. Shane's World shut down the Greek system at ASU. To this day, if you go on Google Map Images, go look at it right now. You can look at University and oh God. I wish I knew what that cross street was. Um, the old, what used to be, uh, what used to be frat row of the 15 houses is flattened. There's nothing. I mean, now I think they're building new buildings there, but it, it was flattened for years and years and years because the old president of ASU, Michael Crow, was so offset by what it was doing to his name, he eliminated Greek from being a part of campus. And by the way, at the time, it was so a part of campus that I wasn't even in a frat. Yeah. But my friends were uh, Sigma Chi's. Oh, and all big I did, one. That's a big one. They're a big one. All I did was go there with them. I saw it. See, I would go. I would go party my face off. And they were I like, wouldn't. you should join. And I was like, don't want to. They would. I don't like the commitment. I, I never rushed. I never did anything. Couldn't. I, I don't like commitment. The, the only thing that got me in the door ever of a frat party was because my roommate, Amir, sold QPs of Chronic. Amir? Yeah. yeah Long I know, Island. By the way, I know this guy. From, I don't know this guy, yeah. but I know this guy. He's from Long Island. You know what we used to do? This is so fucked up. This is this is awful. 
Is it famous Jewish fraternity A E Pi? Yeah, dude. Okay. I knew about A E Pi. We sold. I did. I used A E Pi. They were like, yeah, dude. That's we really used to, funny. We used to we used to hang out with these uh, football players. Yeah, and <laughs> we would stand. A E Pi's party was in the way way. So their house was designed like it was way more like hallway narrow. So yeah. to get to the back, you'd have to go through. One little section in the front, and it was kind of impossible to navigate. It's all ranch style houses. In yeah, exactly, right? Exactly. And you'd have to go through one way. Well, we would hang out with these football players up front, and they would charge everybody five to ten bucks. Beautiful, dude. And I would sit there all night getting high and drunk with these guys. They would charge people. We had nothing to do with what was going on back there, dude. That's very. That's when you see very who's, divisive. That, so we walk away with like eighty bucks, and then we would go. You, that's who you party. see. That's how you see who's going to be successful in life. <laughs> yeah, who's, who's you start seeing people that do like little schemes like that, and uh-huh. like like the kids that are parents spending their parents' money. They're usually there, and they're just like, I don't care, I don't care, it's not doesn't mine. matter. And then the right. kids that are kind of like, yo, I think we could do this and get that money. And you're mm-hmm. like, like Amir was one of those kids where he's like, fuck these kids, we'll take their money. And you're like, I like you, <laughs> I like. I don't this know guy. whose idea it was, but that was such an easy scam that we were like, God, we can just take if we just say, give us ten bucks. Yeah, I, the, it would. The Greek system was the Greek life was so big in Arizona that I didn't like going to Arizona because everyone was like going to bars, and then eventually by junior year it washed down. Where yeah, it wasn't a big deal. And everyone was still going to bars because everyone was 21. Did you ever come up to Phoenix or no? Fuck yeah, I Yeah, did. you did. You I came. came up a bunch. One night, yeah. I drank a bottle of wild turkey and drove back to Tucson. Not proud of that. Whoa. Hunter S. Thompson style. 99, drive. right down I-10. And that's I lived in Marana. long drive. Right off Ina Road. Got off shit. Ina Road, dude. I fucking, in the strat ass. Oh, you did? Oh, shit. Dude, that's a, so you blacked out and. 12 pack of Rolling Rock in the uh, behind the passenger seat. Fuck off. I was in a real Hunter S. Thompson phase. So, you yeah, yeah, yeah. You wanted to, you wanted to write a novel so bad. You want to write a novel? I just like the in way in your head. You wanted yeah, to write a novel. Yeah, I like yeah. being crazy and doing drugs and fucking going mm-hmm. nuts. And That's how I ended up at those schools. You know that? Like my father went to my stepdad, who I went to the University of Tennessee, and uh, I was like, oh, maybe I'll maybe I'll go there. I don't know. Like I was really bad at school. Like I was a smart enough kid, but yeah. man, I fucking hated school so much. And teachers were always like, your son is. Is smart and he doesn't even try and he still gets a B and it's very annoying because other students can't learn because he's distracting. I heard that my whole life. That yeah. was my whole life. He's you very know what? distracting. It's really funny is drop it to a C and I'm the same. Yeah, I say, yeah. well, dude, I would get I would get two C's and three B's. That would be like the that would that be was the, how I had to keep my license. Two C's, three B's. That was it forever. If I got a three point oh, or I couldn't have a license. 3.0? 3.2 was my shit. That was a 3.2 uh, was like my shimmy number. Two point nine, and I blame being bad at tests because my dad died and I got into Arizona. <laughs> I literally, I, I had, I, so Tennessee, I thought, well, maybe I'll go to the University of Tennessee because that's where he went and I have an affinity to that. And the kid I was going to go to the University of Tennessee with, I've told this story before, yeah. but uh, you kid I was going to go to the University of Tennessee with his father, they're well off, they're powerful sure. dudes. And his dad was like, you boys should go see your cousin in Arizona. Now, I always wanted to go to California. Growing up in Chicago, California was like, You'll never get out. You'll never make it. How are you going to get out there? That's insane. Like the idea was crazy, right? Yeah. Like uh, like to to Chicago people, Iowa is like, that's pretty far west. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah. Then going all the way to the coast. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? Like, Nebraska. What are you? How are you going to get back? Fuck, yeah. A spaceship? Yeah. 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 Like, so when I said I, I was Mark, like, come in here. Andrew <laughs> wants to go to California. Yeah. And you're like, how the hell are you going to get out there? Yeah. What do they do? They time so, travel over there. See, what's weird to me is like LA was like um, the hot. Uh, cousin we didn't talk because I'd go to the Bay Area all the time. Oh, right. So, so, that, going, so you're familiar. I, I, was yeah. San, I was flying by myself at five years old to San Francisco to hang out with my alcoholic dad That's in Mill dog. Valley. And That's I was like, awesome. Yeah, dude. San Francisco in the 90s when you're a kid, it's the shit. But you were saying, so you... Oh, no. So, so, cousins so, so, in Arizona. So, yeah. So, no. So, seriously, drugs was the impetus for this whole thing. I said, well, maybe we'll look at ASU. So, we went to Arizona. We went to Phoenix. And I and I sat on what would be my future dorm steps. I'll never... Dude, this is so burned in my brain. I have a bad memory from the way past. But I can vividly remember sitting on the stoop. We ate mushrooms in a peanut butter jar with his cousin's boyfriend who was like, Hey, I'm trying to fuck your cousin. Get out of here. Like, it was so like, get the fuck out of... Here's drugs. Go away. And I was like, that guy's the coolest guy I've ever seen in my entire life. You know what I like about him? He just him? gave He's us drugs. Straight to business. Yeah, he was like, I want to fuck your cousin. You and the ugly orange-haired kid, get out of my face You're now. You're cramping my shit. <laughs> Dude, it was perfect. We got mush... He goes, here's mushrooms. There's peanut butter. Leave. And I was like... <laughs> yeah, like you are like a dog that he wanted to fuck. He's like, smear peanut butter on some shit. Get him the fuck out of here. Honestly, it worked well. We ate fucking mushrooms. We walked around for a while. And By I the sat, way, people I need s- to realize this. Yeah. 
If you you everyone should do mushrooms in the state of Arizona. I, I I so wholeheartedly agree. The way that the sky is clear, the way that the light is, the way the that way night, the, ni- the night, night, the night, yeah, the night. Dan, <laughs> yeah. Dan, you yeah. cut. Yeah. The way that the night is still in Arizona. It's unbelievable it's on mushrooms. For mushrooms. I've, freshman year, I did mushrooms Ugh. on the mall in Tucson, and it was everything our, is perfect. It was perfect. The calmness of the desert. I've talked about that before. Yeah. People know. People on the po- people who listen to the podcast are like. He talk, the calmness of the desert does a thing to people. Everyone anyway, should do it in the forest and everyone should do it in the desert. It's forest and desert. And I do say desert preference for me because... I'm a forest guy because I like I like uh, fur-lined hoodies. I like stillness. I love Because I love the forest warmth. has noises and the, and the desert has that. no noises. I love the, I love the <laughs> oh, noises I like of silence. Li- I like the noises of life. <laughs> so I sat on the fucking stoop of my what would be dorm and we did mushrooms. And I literally remember turning to my friend and saying to him... We have to go to school here. I'll never forget. I literally looked him in the eyes and he was smiling and it was like a, such a sweet, warm smile. And I go, we have to go to school here. And he was like, we do. And we did. That was literally how I went to ASU. That was the story of how I, like, it, it changed my perspective. I was like, I have to get out of the Midwest. I can't stay home. If I'm going to do comedy. Yeah. Because I watch. So you knew you were going to do comedy. Yeah, man. It, I, I posted on Instagram a year ago. Uh, a letter, my senior, um, my senior, uh, whatever that, the thesis letter. Yeah. And I said, I don't care how I do it, but I want to make a living doing comedy. I don't care how it happens. I think I said very similarly. The I same wanted thing. it. So I didn't, I didn't know what it was. I won, I won most likely to be a stand up comedian. Oh, you did? And then I gave the Dirk Diggler speech from Boogie Nights. <laughs> I was like, you know, we're just going to keep Did on rocking you show and rolling. Your dick, dude? No, I goes, we're just going to keep on going out there and we can keep making movies. We're just going to keep out there and keep rocking and rolling and do the kick. <laughs> yeah. But it yeah. was, I didn't, when I moved to Tucson, I almost had an opposite experience. Oh, really? I knew I wanted to get out of Colorado because okay. the way I watched my dad die, I just feel like he never took a shot at anything. I was like, dude, this guy was so funny. What so did you do smart. for a living? He's a bartender, worked at a liquor store. His whole life. Yeah, it was always in the Navy. always was around the sauce. He was in the Navy and mm. then worked in restaurants. You know, he was like a general manager of a restaurant for a little bit, but then he bartender. He's just, that there's nothing wrong with that. No, but he it, he was making a living. But he was so fucking funny and so smart that you're like, man, you didn't ever want to take a shot. Mm. And he was always like, I'm gonna be a radio DJ. You know, like he was. That's what he told my grandma, and that's what he wanted to be. He even told my mom that, and they just never did it. And so I remember, you know, he died and then my sister died. And then I'm kind of like, well, fuck this. Mm -hmm. Fuck staying in Colorado. What am I doing? I'm going to go to CSU. I'm going to go to Fort Collins and get fucking blackout and marry a girl that went to fucking Chaparral. And then we're going to live in fucking Littleton. (laughs) And I'm going to be working at a, you know, probably a decent job at like a mortgage firm where I'm the funniest guy in the office, Mm -hmm. but feel a little unfulfilled and... You know, eventually I'm going to meet a lady that works at the office. I'm going to cheat on my wife with her. And it's going to be a whole fucking thing. Now oh, your secretary. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, I'm, then I'm divorced. Then I got to stay at my mom's in Aurora. And then mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, fuck, why did I ever fucking go to school? And I'm never like, why am I in this cycle? And you go to your buddy's house from high school for Highlands Ranch. I go see Garapé. A- <laughs> he's living out in fucking Highlands. You know, he's right around the corner. What is it? Cherry? Uh, 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 Cherry it Creek. Cherry Creek. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm over, uh, uh, you know, and then fucking Byron just bought his new place off C470 Son and Kate Carl. Got to go see the. Kind of good. These are all things I just do when I'm home. Um, this is all real shit. Yeah. Real yeah. names are always you, funny. My old bag is from Denver. You know that, right? I didn't know that. Yeah. That's great. Denver. Yeah. So the, all this stuff, like I under, this is the same relatability to when I go home to the Midwest. It's the yeah. exact same shape. Yeah. You're just shape. like, I know the where all this. The same. Yeah. So I thought to myself, I was like, fuck staying in Colorado. Yeah. You wanted to go. I wanted to go to Texas. Mm. I want to go to Austin. Austin. Did well, not have the grades. I was just going to say, that's uh, oddly a great school, a party school, school, but a great school. Isn't great that school. so did, fucked up? Yeah. They shouldn't do <laughs> that. If I they? did it all over again, I would have, it, that would have been the perfect city for me to go to college because Austin has a good comedy scene. They yeah, it does. Good, they have a good art scene. Did you four year it, by the way? Yeah. You did. So you graduated. High school. Oh, Co- college. college. Four and a half. I graduated December of 05. Good boy, good boy. Still yeah, counts. you got out. Are you kidding me? I have friends that went to ASU with me for seven years. They're still there, I think. That's so funny. I'm dead ass. I'm, I couldn't be more serious when I say I have a friend that went to eight colleges. Hey, look at me. Eight. That's because funny. Phoenix was famous for having CCs. Yeah. Glendale Community College, Mesa oh, Community College. So, Maricopa so, County yeah, Community. Dude, <laughs> MCCC. MCCC. So people would literally go to ASU. Yeah. I had kids. Yuma Valley. <laughs> like you're sort of like, oh, Dude, I had kids. Uh, Sawaro. Yeah. I had people that would go to ASU with me for a year. I would know that they were there for a year. And then I'd see them for another year and a half. 
and I'd be like, "Hey, what are you doing? At, uh, what are what major are you at school?" And they're like, "What? I'm not at you. I'm not at ASU. I'm at I'm ASU at in Saguaro nine community. months. Yeah, no, I'm, I, dude, yeah. I'm at the Sunshine Community College. I'm at right Mary Rio Cope, Salado. I'm, I'm at I'm some guy's apartment on. Fuck. Yeah, there's North. I'm at North Phoenix Tech. What is that? You're like, it's a guy named Raul. <laughs> right. We, we just fucking. So welcome parts. back to class. Yeah. Uh, thank you for returning. Uh, Most people just bail. Your midterm papers already. <laughs> um, it was a thing where I was like, Texas, nope. And then my friend Mike's. Did you apply to get in, by the way, to Austin? Looked at the requirements, was like, yet. Later, get. Yeah. Later, Gator. AP, you were like, AP. I had AP English, but I was also like, that ain't enough. But AP English to them isn't the thing. They're no. looking for bio. They're yeah, looking, they're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut up, dum dum. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then. <laughs> Smart talkie boy over here. I realized that Arizona was academically on par with University of Colorado. Mm -hmm. They're the same tier. Right. They were like very similar in like uh, when I, when, in 2001. Pac-10 schools. At well, at the time, Big 12, Pac-10. That's right. why I went to right. Arizona because right. right. I was right. like, oh, it's Pac-10. We'll never have to play Colorado. That's right. And then Colorado joined the Pac-10 and I was like, you motherfuckers. Then it became the Pac-12. I know. Yeah. I'm not a fan of that. Gary but, Barnett? Gary Barnett. Oh, yeah. Gary Barnett. Northwestern. Did not, he was at Colorado. But Northwestern, right? Yes, he was at Northwestern. And you know who played there? Who? Who took he took a guy from my high school, Chris Brown, one of the best running backs Colorado ever had. Beat Nebraska in the two thousand one game. Scored five touchdowns. Yep, six. Went to my high school. I was at that game. His sister went to our high school. Is a fucking like, I want. I don't want a Olympic track runner. She's something of the USA team track That's runner. That's awesome. Yeah, when you see a family like that, you're like. Everyone in your family can do what any it's anything like, they want. It's like Bones Jones. His whole family's like, oh, my other two brothers are Super Bowl champions. Right. Yeah. What's up? What's I'm the up? greatest <laughs> fighter in the UFC history. Like, I'm like, my sister's employee of the month at her job. Oh, yeah. I got a cousin that's pretty good screenwriter. Um, <laughs> but there was a So yeah, so you so so Austin, no, Colorado, you said the shift the, the No, I was like Arizona. Parallel. I was like, all right, if it's as good as Colorado, mm -hmm. let me see what it takes to get in. 3.0. 25 on your ACT. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got what it. What was your ACT, by the way? I think it was 24. Because you know like what? You know why I asked that? Because in the Midwest and in Colorado, who somewhat shimmies towards the Midwest, yeah. we take ACTs. Same here. They I, take SATs you out could east. You take either one. Oh, see, we had to take ACTs. You could take either one. First and time, I took by the ACT. way? 23. That's what I got. Really? I got a 23 the first time. Second time, I got a 27. Fuck off. I got a 24. Oh, I'm, I'm, sorry, not, well, I'm not going to fuck you. <laughs> it's still got 23. But because of that 27, I was able to like look at more shit. There's a joke in my special mm -hmm. about me farting during the PSATs that is 100% true. <laughs> that during the joke, my friend Garapé, who I made laugh because the proctor was like, do you know how to be quiet? Q-U-I. And I leaned and I was like, <laughs> and I let it go eye to eye. And I mean, it was like, dude. It was the first pop I ever felt in my life where it was like a laugh. Where I was like, Jesus. Everyone was like, what? And I was lost like, it. Yeah, dude. And Garapé, yeah. my best friend, was like next to me. And he thought it was the, him and my friend Byron thought it was the funniest thing in the world. And so uh, I was like, you know what? I got I close to the ACT. I'm mm -hmm. like one below. It's 25. I'm 24. <clears throat> I apply. And then they're like, there's this part of this website that was like, if you've had any traumatic things happen to you in high school, you're allowed to. And I was like. <laughs> Looks like I'm a wildcat. And I was like, my dad died, my sister died, and I'm pretty close. And they were like, and they're like you're a fucking wildcat. This guy's like, a wild. Yeah. And then um, we took a trip my senior year to go visit Tucson. Because like, dude, Soder's going to Arizona. And let's go for spring break. Let's go down somewhere warm. We'll drive the, we drove a 1992 Astro van. How far was the drive from? 16 from hours. Damn, dude. Denver people, by the way, are willing to make certain drives. Something well, about that part of the West. Welcome to the like, frontier. We'll do it, dude. Dude, I, I, I did. We have Denver. family that drives. I've done Denver to Tucson in a straight shot. Yeah. 16 what? hours. Why? Do you want to get there? Dude, Denver guys convinced me to drive from Phoenix to South Padre Island, Texas. Yeah. And I was like, that's 28. And they're like, we can do it. Yes, you can. That's insane. One, we did it, by the way. One Christmas, mm -hmm. I drove Tucson to Vegas, to Denver. Fuck you. I swear to You're God. You're an idiot. With, I swear to God, the car was me, my friend Jumadre, 
His friend Time Mark out. Jumadre. Yeah, it's about, is it's, that a movie coming out this, yeah, this winter? <laughs> that's what a bunch of kids. Jumanji came out when Jumadre. Moved, he was my friend Johnny's little brother, and he moved from Texas to to Colorado, Dallas, to Aurora. I don't know where he's from in Texas. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. He was from Michigan. He was from uh, where? Where's Mayweather from? Um, oh, uh, East, uh, not East Lansing. No, no, uh, no. Um, Oh, fuck you. I, just, I know everyone's no. mad because you're like, fuck it. People at home are like, dude. Springs. No, uh, no, it's, um, I'll get it. God damn it, dude. <laughs> this trying, is so annoying. It's driving I'm, me nuts. He's, <laughs> dude, you did this because you said East Lansing. Now you ruined my, the, where my brain was going to go. You fucking, you know, you changed the, ch- the train track lines. You know what I mean? Like you shifted it left. I was going to go right and it was going to be fine. And you fucking, ding, 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 ding. you fucked me I up when you said East Lansing. Thing. I was like, East Lansing. That's uh, right. It's, oh, uh, fuck. <laughs> Cunt. I'm going to get my fucking phone. No, dude, you got it. Because now, cause cause now cause Grand now, Rapids. Now I, oh, it is. <laughs> no, it's not Grand Rapids. No, 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 wait. East Grand Rapids. He's from East Grand Rapids. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Floyd Mayweather on. Jr., Money Mayweather. Hold greatest, on, hold on, hold on. Greatest fighter of all time. No, is it? Wait, wait. Now you're making me feel like I'm wrong. Type in Floyd Mayweather Jr. See what's up. It is fucking Grand Rapids. East Grand Rapids. Rapids it's Grand Rapids. That's right. <sighs> Damn, dude. Lansing fucked me up because Lansing, I was I know, like, I that's not it. I know it's not that. I know it's not Lansing. Yeah. You know what's in East Lansing? I believe Eastern Michigan College, and I know that from yeah, no, NCAA Eastern, College yeah, Eastern, Football. Eastern Michigan. Yeah. That's over there. Yeah. Lansing. Good, good, good city. Great, great city. city. Great city. Great uh, city. The Mitten. Continue, 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 so continue. So we take a van. Uh, we dr- like my Vegas. S- so Ve- oh, Denver, so that Vegas, was a real thing. Vegas. This guy Paul. So I grew up in Aurora, Colorado, and uh, South the Southeast Denver. Southeast Denver. Yeah, it's like southeast of Denver. Oh, I know my Denver dog. You really do. I do. It's by the I way, I met a couple people in Arizona that were from Air- from Aurora. How many was, How many California kids you go to school with? A lot. It was mostly San Diego and Long Island. Hundred percent. You know the reason I came to California was because of San Diego kids. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, and one Northern California kid. You know the reason that I went to New York was because of the kids I went to college with. Is that? Cr- but were they Were they were? I was like, some of them were cool, but most of them were tools. Yeah. And I liked the Long Island kids because there was Long Island kids in Arizona, right. and I was like, man, you're fucking direct. And they're like, it was a mirror. He was like. Yeah, bro. What are you doing? First time we hung out, it was like the freshman orientation lunch. Mm-hmm. $5 a plate. No one was looking. Amir just grabbed two plates. He goes, come on. And I was like, are you going to pay for those? He goes, they weren't looking, dickheads. And Smart. I was like, Amir. I love him. And then he ended up being the worst roommate I've ever had in my life. Where is he now, by the way? Uh, lives in Columbia. Runs a business. Columbia. The country. Oh, I was like, Missouri? No. <laughs> what the fuck is He lives in Columbia. And runs a small business. Yeah, we had Chipotle before the bonfire like a month ago and I was like you're still exactly who you are and you love every piece of that don't you isn't that nice to return to return to that world yeah you're like oh man you're like look at you and he's like yeah Yo, you're a dick I saw you on TV and you're like yeah <laughs> <laughs> by the way like, those guys I, never see TV he goes yeah I fucking love billions and you're like yeah alright <laughs> so we uh, so we um, he's like, yeah. so this oh the Vegas story dude I haven't thought about this in since it happened, it was like 2004. That's right. It's sophomore year, junior year, sophomore junior year. Junior year. Yeah, junior year. And this guy, Paul, was like, yo, man, I, I got to get back to Colorado for Christmas. And Our guy like, was John, by the way. Colorado yeah. John was my guy. All right. Paul was from Aurora. And Paul mm-hmm. was like, hey, you're going back to Aurora, right? And he like got me at a house party. Where he's like, what are you doing for Christmas? And I was like, yeah, I'm going home. He's like, oh, are you flying? I'm like, no, driving. He's like, who are you driving with? I was like, by myself. Can I get a ride? And like, fuck. Yeah. I guess, dude. <laughs> so then, dude, this story's wild. Give it. Jumadre calls me and he's like, yo, man, I don't have a way to get home for Christmas. Johnny's going out a week before. And that's his brother. He's like, Johnny's going to drive out a week before. I know you're staying because I had my job. Mm-hmm. He's like, I know you're staying to work. You think you could come up to Vegas and get me? And I was like, ah, I looked Damn. at it. And this is you gotta look at like MapQuest. This was there's no like. Oh oh oh, bro. This this is, this is. It was a journey. This is print out, follow directions, because phone ain't gonna redirecting. That doesn't exist, Fuck, bro. Dude, that is like Those must pr- follow. Just, you just saying printed out directions gave me a feeling of being like, because <laughs> you'd be like, peep, 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 and you go. All right, 0. 0.9 nice miles shit, to I thirty to I forty. <laughs> so um, I'm like, yeah, man. You know what? 
So it's Tucson to Vegas, by the way, is a deep. That's already a pretty six deep hours. drive. Six and a half, yeah. That's six. And then mm-hmm. Vegas, it almost breaks up the same as the drive from Tucson to Denver. Because right. you go Tucson, Vegas is about six and a half. You can do it five and a half, six. Vegas to Denver, about 10. If the weather is I was is just going to say that. Perfect. If the weather is good. Because otherwise December. you're looking at 12. Dude. This is December. Yeah. And you don't get 12. You mm. get to 17 or 18. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say. So If you're fucking lucky, you If get you're 12. fucking lucky, it's 12. So, dude, I can't. I've never told the story on a podcast before. In Give fact, it to I me. haven't fucking thought about it in fucking years. So I'm working at KFMA. I'm a DJ at KFMA. Mm-hmm. Doing open mics. I'm doing like comedy. But my job is I'm a, I work at the Rock Station in Tucson. It's like a cool job. I love it. I love the people I work with. Yada, yada, yada. I'm at KFMA. And Paul calls me. And he goes, dude, can my dog come with us? And I was like, <laughs> what kind of dog is it, dude? And he goes, it's a 115-pound pit bull. Holy and I was like, fuck. I don't, it, it was over 100 pounds. 115 That's pounds. a big dog, it's dude. Big, muscly dog. 115 fucking pounds. It was probably a 100 dog. It was probably 100 pounds. I have friends that weigh that much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just remember him being like, is that cool? I'm like, well, I'm picking up Jumadre and his cousin, Mark. Mark, By Jumadre's the way, like. Jumadre always has a cousin that you got to take But he was cousin. like, my cousin, Mark, is going to come back with us. Right. And I was like, yeah, dude. I've known Johnny. I've known his older brother since I was five. I've known their family since sure. I was, you know. And I was like, fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> dude paul calls me and he's like all right so can i bring my dog and i'm like dude, i don't know i'm picking up two dudes in vegas we're driving to vegas staying the night and then we're picking these guys up and we're driving mm-hmm. home oh man oh fuck man i don't know what i'm gonna do with this dog i'm like can someone watch it until you come back i don't know when i'm coming back man paul wasn't a college student fyi by the way lived near college wasn't a college student had about 15 of these friends. Dangerous dude, too. Had a lot Sometimes of guns. Sometimes I forget. I'm like, when, when did you Paul had a class? lot of guns. I wouldn't fuck with Paul. No. I would never fuck Paul with Paul. Paul was going to class on the street. Yeah, but Paul was cool as fuck to me because I was from Aurora. Fuck yeah, Paul. And Paul and I were cool. I liked Paul. Shut up, Paul. Shut, shut up, out Paul. Paul. Big shout out, Paul. Shut up, Paul. One time brought a gun over and put it on our coffee table. And Amir goes, yeah, that's a nice gun. And he picked it up. And I was like, yeah, take the slide out. Because, you know, he's yeah. like, what? I was like, I was like, take take the clip out. Yeah, because I don't want to die, dude. It's Wednesday. And he's like, yo, you're, you're a fucking, yo, you're a fag. There's no fucking bullets in here. And I was like, can I see that gun? <laughs> Popped one out of the chamber. And, you know, like you rest it with the chamber open. Yes. And I was like, now you can play with your gun. And he's like, yeah, I didn't know there was a bullet in there. Whenever he got awkward, his face crunched. He's like, yeah, I didn't know there was a bullet in there. <laughs> yo, so, I had no idea, bro. There's yeah, bullets so, in there. So Paul's like, he's doing that thing. And he did it successfully where he's like, Dude, I'll never, he goes, I can't, I can't, no one can watch this dog. And I'm like, well, dude, I'm picking up two full grown men. Yeah. Four seat Stratus. It's a Stratus. It's a roomy four, but it's a four. <laughs> no, nah, man, I guess, fuck. I guess I was going to take this dog out to the desert and shoot it. And I was like, no, what? No, dude, I'll dude. never forget where I was. <laughs> when he said that, I was on the phone outside of the studio smoking a cigarette. And he goes, uh, I guess I'm just going to take the dog out to the desert and shoot it. And I go, no, no what? No. Why <laughs> the fuck? I? What the fuck? What the fuck, dude? I'm like, Paul. And he's like, no, dude. No, man. I don't got nowhere to place. I don't got money to put this dog in like a. Holy shit, bro. Bring the dog. Yeah, you have to bring the dog. Dude, don't but shoot the dog. But it's sitting on your lap. Oh, dude. Dude, I drove. So Paul, the dog, and I drive to Vegas. We Side show note, up. real fast. If you're you ever want to know, you're a good cat, dude. If you ever want to know, you're a good. You got a good. Thanks. You're a good soul. Thanks, dude. If you want to know one of the funniest things in the world, hmm. it's when your overexpressive black friend doesn't know he's going to be traveling with a pit bull and finds out in the parking lot. Jamadre's <laughs> <laughs> like, Nah, man. Nah, fuck man. Fuck that. Nah, yo, f- man. yo, fuck he's that. He's staying on his fucking lap. The nah, dog fuck did fuck, that. and we finally got him. Like, he's going to be on his lap. He's like, Nah, man. Marcus is just this cool, quiet dude. He's like, Whatever, man. I don't give a fuck. And Jamadre's like. No, man. No, <laughs> man. We drove me. Vegas? Yeah. We drive Vegas to Denver, which is, you don't realize the whiteness of the territory you're going through. Mm-hmm. You're going through Utah. Utah, yeah. We stopped in St. George. Whoa, 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 whoa. Got out, and it's like at a gas station. It's you're like, the only one that got out, by the way. I get out, yeah. and they're like, 
Hello. Hello, then, sir. Hello, sir. And then the other three doors open, and it's two black dudes, a Mexican dude, and a pit bull. And they're Are like, you being held captive? What the fuck? What the fuck? Dude, well, I watched so many faces <laughs> in gas stations be like, <laughs> like watching their car get out. Do you need help? Dude, Jumadre knew halfway through that I was real annoyed with Paul. And Jumadre was just kind of like, hey, Paul, how come you keep acting asleep when we gas up? And he was just saying shit like that. I that like real. that. By the way, that is a well, that, that is a key move. Why the fuck aren't you kicking in, bitch? Yeah. We're all kicking Dude, in, you bitch. He came back from McDonald's with like a quarter pounder and like fries and nuggets. And, and every, nothing for anybody else? Nope. And Dude, I'd have like, left him for dead. Yeah, I know. Just slit your fucking I throat. Fucking at that. God, <laughs> I would have fucking lost I almost it. broke your chair. I fucking Could have done it. That would have been worth it. Fuck that guy. That's bullshit. But in the Christmas spirit, I fucking drove him back to Aurora. Never hung out with him again. You're a good fucking egg. Thank Honestly, you. dude. <laughs> Thanks, man. But I just you saved a dog's life. That dude, got, when he that... said that shoot shit, I was like, come on, Paul. Peace. What do we do? You're a peace, bro. That's an interesting. Like whenever you hear someone do stuff like that or say stuff like that, you go, you're really gonna. If I didn't fuck, that's the universe and my yeah. uh, my impartial yes. belief of what the ha- what's happening in the world of my lack of religious yeah fucking honest belief in my heart. Like there's moments the universe gives that to you and you go. I got to save this dog's life. Like, I just, I don't have a choice. I have to do this, Santino, dude. you know, that's exactly how I thought about it. I went like this, like, it's a good boy. <laughs> He's a good boy. He's a good boy, dude. He was dude. a good boy. I got to. stayed on the lap. He was a good boy the whole drive home. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? That was a Merry Christmas, good boy. Good boy. Paul, yeah, see? beat it. <laughs> fuck you're off, a, Paul. You're a good boy. Paul, get the fuck out But like it. everybody in college, I don't know if this is a common college experience and I'll see it in the comments, but like I had a group of guys that we partied with that yeah. were in college, that were around the college. And this yeah. happens probably predominantly in Arizona. Arizona has a lot of like hanging outs, but not really going to schools. As they're called in Tucson, T-Lokes. T-Lokes? Yeah. Yeah. Lo- yeah, yeah, that's right, dude. Some fucking, some local ass dude who, by the way. The night I a, got robbed. There was oh. always a 38 year old. Yes. And we're 20 and I was like, what are you doing here? Whose guy? Whose buddy is that? But like, he was also nice enough where I was like, I don't hate him, but like, why the fuck is he kicking it with us? Who is this guy? Who is Derek? And now that I'm in my late thirties, I think about if it all falls apart, I'm going to go to <laughs> next. I'm going to Tucson. Dude. I'm going to be the guy that's like, well, what's up, dude? You guys want to go fucking party? I did mushrooms the night I got robbed. Um, and I went to my You friend. were high when you got robbed? No, no, no. I got robbed in the afternoon. Oh, you just scared. I was like, that's no, 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 no. That, the worst moments of life. I would be a bubble boy right now. Right. Uh, I, Dan? Yeah, yes. Yeah. I, he eats at noon and that's we, it. We went to drink at the Golden Nugget and then I went and took mushrooms at my friend Johnny Bluntman's house <laughs> and I got fucking wrecked and yeah. I was on a lot of mushrooms and very drunk and I went to my friend Mark's house and he was just the best. I'm still friends with him. He lives in Portland. He's the shit. He's, he was like, one of my friends from college that truly is still one of my very close friends and I love very much. But I was so fucked up on mushrooms and traumatized by getting hogtied and pistol whipped. Yeah, dude. That I was like, I gotta I gotta talk to someone. Yeah. And so I went to Mark's house and had a blast. Season one of The Ultimate Fighter was going on. So we we're like watching that. Dope. On Spike. I'm I'm ripping through a pack of R.I.P. Camelites Spike. In a box. R.I.P. Spike. I'm ripping through a pack of Camel Lights in a box. Just fucking <laughs> tearing through them outside. And his cute neighbors came out. And I'm on three to point three point five to four four grams of mushrooms. So I'm fucking I'm fucked. Four grams? I took a handful Dude, and you're Johnny lit. Are you kidding me? That's Johnny Blunt Man was like, I think you just ate about four grams of mushrooms. That's like, heavy mushrooms. I don't give a fuck who use who who's done mushrooms. Four grams is a, a good amount of mushrooms. I would say it's the second most I've ever done. That's a shitload, dude. It was a lot. It was too, it was fun. It was too much. You know what I appreciate about what you just said? What? You know people brag about doing drugs. You know people brag about lies about drugs. Yeah. And the honesty of three to four grams. Yeah. And li- like any asshole is like, I knew a guy that did twelve. And you're like, shut the fuck up. Yes. Like four grams of mushrooms it was, it was is a much. lot of mushrooms. It's too much. People do not know that is a lot of mushrooms. If you've never done them, oh, I did. I had done them. I had done them regularly. No, no, I'm saying if people don't know yeah. what the measurement is, like, oh no, it's hard to explain because somebody goes, I guess Graham because I, I like, over, no, no, no. I over, my eyes were bigger than my stomach and I was drunk That's, and I, you're, you're ripped, you're yeah, ripped on four ripped, grams. But it's laughing so hard, love, dude. laughing, love so hard and doing like crusty fighter poses and we were doing like dude i remember this specifically from the night was an old ufc after they get knockouts they'd make them take pictures where they would 
and then they oh my god and, and i remember they, that they point them and then they go like that yeah and then they so turn dude, sumner and i were doing that for a good hour in his apartment just my eyes like saucer plates and i'm like <laughs> and we're just like dying laughing and then we go outside and i'm smoking cigarettes and his cute neighbors come out and we're talking to him and i'm just like mushroom just like yeah you're lit I'm like, well, of course, this is. And then one of them, I go, so where are you from? And they go, Tucson. I go, you're a T loke like that. And it instantaneously, <laughs> like, all right. And then he went back in, and I was like, I fucked that up. And it, yeah. But T, but T, but code T loke code should have been like them being like, fuck yeah. Then you would have yeah. partied. Yeah, I would have partied. Then you would have known. Yeah. Phoenix, there was no name for Phoenicians. Is a, that's my favorite Louis C.K. joke. The Phoenicians, well, I know. People I know. from Phoenix are called Phoenicians. Phoenicians. Like, Shut up, fuck. Keep sucking that dick. <laughs> Phoenix had some of my best times and also some of my worst. It was where I got my head kicked in for the first time. Of all the fist fights ever I had ever gotten in as a youth, Phoenix was the worst I've ever. Grimy, been. dude. Dude, I got my shit beat. I'm not gonna lie. My buddy, my two, the the guys that my friends that know that listen to the podcast, especially my buddy Colin, we got in such a bad fight and we were outnumbered and we knew it. We were at an apartment complex. I don't even know how it started, but dude, I'll never forget to this day how bad I felt before I got hit. That I was like we're going to lose and this is going to be bad for like a couple of days. Like I just, I remember feeling like uh, some guy was being an asshole. It got out of control. They were being mean to a guy that like, I never, me and my group of friends, I never once, we were never instigators, but like we were put up against a wall and I remember being like, well, this is going to be bad. And we got walloped. And I mean, I had never got my ass kicked this bad in a long time. Like stomped out. I got kicked in the face. A few oh. times. Yeah, it sucked. It sucked. Dude, it sucked. Colin, my buddy Travis, I think they got it just as bad, if not worse. Colin got pretty bad. But it was just like the aggressiveness of Phoenix has this. Tucson's got a very similar aggressiveness. I'll fuck you up. Desert. Arizona has I'll fuck you up desert energy, and it's it's terrible. It's and great, you know, you but know it's what? terrible. It's like um, I did Joey Diaz's podcast earlier. and he was, talking about, he was talking about how nice people in Colorado are. And it really was this like moment where I moved to Arizona, and I was like, you're mean. Yeah, they're mean. Like, <laughs> they, they, they always make that noise in my head when they're like, it's just that noise. That's the noise of Arizona. To yeah, me. It's a, it's a, it, it's a, there's a very defensive it's, it, thing that Nothing should survive out there. No. Well, so if you the, survive out there, die. you're fucking tough as shit. It's supposed to be dead. Yeah. So yeah, when we would kick it with local dudes or if we get at a party, we, you were, we were bound to get in some trouble. That's what I didn't like is like, I knew local places we went to, local spots. We were, Something bad was going to happen. I could almost like guarantee when we would go out with local guys or a local house party, something fucked up was going to go down because desert shit is tough. They're tough motherfuckers. Dude, that leads me. You want to talk about music. Yo, yeah. I want to, uh, the CD collection. Yes, you're right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, give it. Go ahead. Lead you to what? Oh, no, we were just talking about music, but I was saying like, that's why I loved, I fell in love with the band Queens of the Stone Age working at KFMA in Tucson and Such being in the band. desert. Because it's perfect desert music. It is desert music. But then it just became my favorite band. So now I just like the music wherever. Is it saying, today? What yeah. is, to, is today? One hundred percent. Queens of Stone Age. Yeah, dude, my favorite Rogan was he just had a homie on. I know, I saw. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Yeah, it was incredible. But Desert Sessions eleven and twelve, fucking phenomenal. Yes, dude. The dude just makes shit in the perfect way. So it's like, I there's there's artists that you have that I call brain ointment. Ooh. Where you like your brain's cooking and you're like, let me just put this music on. There's certain albums. What is that, that? What's that album to you? Depends on how I'm feeling, what I'm looking to get. Okay, so let's do. Ha well, let's do. Um, let's do. I'm on saying a brain high. ointment at its finest. Yeah. is too many thoughts. The world hates me. I'm imploding. I suck. I either go Queens of the Stone Age. Mm -hmm. I can do uh, like Clockwork the album. I can also do. Uh, I like Kendrick Lamar's Damn. His I mean, great ba brain ointment. Yeah. And, and uh, Mac Miller is swimming. Yeah, I love that. Kid. You just you just put it on and you're like, Sh but it also stones Exile on Main Street. There's like certain mm -hmm. albums I can put on where I'm like, <sighs> what's what's the most famous band uh, socially that you secretly disagree with? <sighs> that everyone's like, oh, I love blah, 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 blah. and then in your brain and in your heart, you just ha you you hate it, but publicly you're kind of like. Yeah, they're fine. You know, you do that thing where you go, yeah, yeah, no, I like them, I guess. But like you inside, too. you too. You too. Dude, I love you. 
I've always really liked you, Dan. Yeah. Honestly, as a comedian Bro, you too, I'm and as a like... guy. And right now, you really fucking cemented yourself in my heart. Yeah, like, it's a band that I don't give a fuck about. I, go like I don't this. hate them. By the way, brought me to tears with the streets yeah. have no name with the Great American musicians. flag. The showmanship. I just. Don't, don't care. care. I, I don't give a fuck. Just don't care. I've never cared. And also, put, you fucking putting that album on my phone without telling me, that made me mad. Ru hey, Apple. You fucked rude, up. Rude. You fucked up. So You ruined my, 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 for me. my old bag, the old bag, uh, the old bowling I have questions for her after we finish the, the old, The old slag. The greatest thing that ever happened, the, the reason that I was like, this is a legit ass bitch. So... She hates REM so much. I can't, I can't. dude. That. She fucking. That is a good one of those. She fucking. That's a good one she, of those. Where almost I would say like I heard REM and I was like, she might be REM. She loathes REM. Yeah, like, to a degree that I can't. We can't. We can't communicate about it because when we try to talk about, it, she's. I'm always like, what really is it? She's like, they're bullshit. She hates them. Yeah. So so the band the National. You know the band the National. Yes. So, yeah. Okay. So the band the National was. Open. We'll make you cry if you watch the movie Warrior. 100. percent with Tom Hardy. The band The National was is an incredible band. They're a great music. They're a great band. We saw them play at Hotel Cafe years ago, <clears throat> a small venue in Los Angeles. Cut to two years later, they opened for REM. Now, now they headline the Hollywood Bowl. They're sure. famous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She wanted to go see them open for REM. This is how much she liked The National. She hates REM so fucking much. I paid premium tickets, dude. I spent a lot of money. So we could see the opening band at the Hollywood Bowl as the sun is still out. It's sh it's still yeah. bright. People are sitting, getting hey, still doing that thing, and and I thought because I don't hate REM, I don't love them, but I don't hate them. I'm just like yeah, whatever. Sure. But I thought I paid. I spent all this fucking money on this fucking yeah, thing. Watch fucking yeah, dude. The moment the National played their last song and said goodbye and and was going to be the break before REM, she turns to me and she goes, "Let's go." Yeah. And I was like, "Wait, we're not." And she goes, "No." I will not watch these fucking losers play music. And I was like, this bitch is dope. And great. we we took off. And I was like, she committed. It's great. She hated them so much. Finding out. Because people like them. And I never knew if I liked them or not. Do you know when someone's so famous band wise that you're like, do I like them or do I fucking don't? I don't know any better. I feel like there's been a couple movies and and Oh, give artists. me a film that people are like, we love it. And you're like, do I love that? Or am I just going um, along with the thing? Casino. <gasps> oh, I don't know. You're gonna make me have a, almost a panic attack. I you don't, don't know if you like it or not. I love Goodfellas. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. Love Goodfellas. But you think Casino might be teetering on? Is it just West Coast Goodfellas? <laughs> <laughs> it's the, bro. I if always, they, if the, if I the, always <laughs> remember the David Spade joke from Hollywood Minute. Casino, Casino it. Casino. Liked it better when it was called Goodfellas. Goodfellas. Yeah. And I remember watching it, going, "That's how I feel." And then everyone's like, "It's the best movie of all time," and you're like. It's good. It's good. It's very good. I love that. See, but I'm not going to Pop your eye out of your socket. You want me to do that? But it's one of my favorite Pesci lines of all time. But one of the best scenes. Charlie M. Charlie, Charlie M. M. You made me pop your eye out of your socket for that fucking brick. Do him a favor. The great one, a great but scene. The, I think the best scene in that casino is, and this will be taken out of context and, and clipped on the internet and, and bury me, but the best scene is when he calls, when, when he calls De Niro and he goes, he goes, did you just, he goes, uh, you kicked my friend out of there? He goes, did you know what he said? He, he told me to go fuck myself. He called me a faggot. And he goes, you call my friend a faggot? You told him to go fuck himself? And he beats that kid with the phone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of the funniest that scenes is, I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. That being said, let's cut to, I love the, the braveness of saying that it might be not as good as people say it is. Because I love it. But I do like what you're saying. I, I'm not trying to be a contrarian. No, I know I'm what you're honestly doing. Honestly, talking from you're being my honest. soul, I'm like, if you ask me what movie. Yeah. Does everybody love? And you're like, and listen, I don't know. my favorite movie of all time, you'd probably be like, that's dumb. That what movie, is it? Boogie Nights. That's your favorite movie of all Boogie time? Boogie Nights is my favorite movie of all time. But it, but it ha must it have some sort of resonance to your youth that you really, really something about it clicks. Teenage years. Something clicks. It came out. It was kind of the first thing that I liked that was like an individual to myself and not like, I didn't have an older sibling tell me it right. or a friend. It was like, I saw Boogie Nights. I was like, oh, this movie is... Troubled, you... Funny. Funny. Like, it was funny in a it way It had a lot of elements like, of strife. It was one of the things where I didn't know John C. Riley character. When I when I found out John C. Riley's character was supposed to be funny, I was like, this is... 
Pretty this brilliant. The, probably the greatest movie of all time. I, and then I just love I, it, and I love how sad it is, and I it love is very how sad. loving it is, yeah. and I love how um, dumb Dirk Diggler is, but then also like, but not you, really. You feel, but not you dumb. feel like that. Not you, dumb. He's pretty. He's. He's pretty... He's um, pie-eyed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just, I'd say he's, he's pie-eyed, but green, then he's... What do they call him? Green ear? You but know, I like... like wet re- I like that. Like, yeah. the revere... I, like, revere the fact that he's just kind of like, you want to see it? You want to... Oh, Tom, goes, do I see oh, it? Tend oh, to watch want, journal. Oh, you want to see it? And he's just kind of like, not like, yeah, he's just kind of like, eh, you know what I mean? This is what you... you yeah, and yeah. also, I just, for some reason, as I've grown up, I'm just like, I, I love that movie. It is a great movie. My favorite movie is Big... Because it holds a big hole. It has it's a big place in my heart for me and my mother watch it all the time. Um, Whenever I go home, it's like it's like the movie to me that represented my childhood of why we ruined movies like that as I've gotten older. Is like there used to be a time when I could tell you a boy turned into a man yeah. and you didn't go, how did it happen scientifically? And you're like, it was a wish. Yeah, nobody cared. Up. It didn't used to be like, well, the protons of the chemical react, it didn't need I to matter. I always think of that movie. Yeah. Living in New York City, whenever I'm inside mm. and I hear sirens, I think of him crying in his first hotel, eating the Oreos. <laughs> and the shots, yeah. And I'm like, Can I you- live in New York City. That's how I know I live in New York City. I go, I live in New York City. It's like raining. It's like, woo. <laughs> Can you name the hotel, by the way? Can you name the hotel? Roosevelt. St. James Hotel, Josh. St. James and he goes, Hotel. He goes, is it safe? He goes, it's religious. That's one of my favorite lines. He goes, St. James Hotel. It's re- is it safe? He goes, it's religious. They moved FAO Schwartz to Rockefeller Center. The only reason that FAO Schwartz is still alive is because of that film. Well, no, it was done. It became an <laughs> Apple store. Dude, the only reason that they survived for any amount of time was because that piano. movie. Yeah, because yeah. the big piano. Damn, that's a good fucking it, that, movie. So to me, that was the epitome of like when we used to not care about. Yeah. We didn't need to know. We didn't need to know what is somebody dying. You got a good text. No, no, no. I don't. I'm like good. a hot text. But, um. Oh shit! It is. Yeah. I just realized what time. Yeah. It is. We're just. We talked. We talked so much prior to and yeah. as well. Anyway. The, the, no, but what I'm, what's interesting yeah. about that is that I love that in kind of like when you said that you uh, like the bravery of me being like maybe casino's not great. I love, I love that the shit. fact that you're like big is my favorite movie. It's my favorite movie of all time because it's not I the most cinematic movie. It's not. It's not. Joe List is one of the. Um, Love Joe List. By love. the way, if you don't know Joe List, go look that motherfucker up. He's a phenomenally hilarious comedian. One Joe the, List is the shit. One of the funniest people. Phenomenal. On, on Great joke. On the planet Earth. Yeah. On the planet Earth. One of the funniest people of all time. And knows movies better than anybody I know. Oh, yeah? That being said, <laughs> I feel like he would be a person if you're like, I like big. He'd be like, what? Why? You know, like there's yeah. so many more. He knows cinema. Right. It's not a cinematic <clears throat> film. No. Boogie no. Nights, sure, kind of. But I a also bit. like it. Yeah. No, you, it's just Pulp because Fiction is another movie. It clicked with you story-wise. Pulp Fiction came out in 1994 when I was 11 years old, mm-hmm. and I watched it, and I was like, wait, the movie doesn't follow a linear path, but then like some stuff happens, and then they smoke cigarettes a bunch, and that's cool, mm-hmm. and uh, heroin looks fun if you get stabbed <laughs> in the chest. And I just loved it, and I just loved some of the jokes. Uh, I remember getting in trouble with my mom for going, that's a pretty good fucking milkshake. And she was like, why'd you say that? What and a go, line. Uh, and then you don't realize that he's on heroin right. until you're older. And you're like, wow, yeah, blasted yeah, I did, on I did, junk. I didn't know what it was. I thought he I thought he just I thought when we you're young, you hear dude like he did drugs. You're really not privy to understanding what that means. Then you're like, that dude blasted off in the bathroom and yeah. came up and smacked a five dollar shake. That's milk and ice cream. Five dollars. Yeah. They don't put no rum in it or That's nothing. Pretty good fucking shake. And he, Pretty good fucking. Shit. It is. Yeah, it, it, is. <laughs> it was so good, man. Like that. that, that so these these non cinema like shot for shot, it's not going to compete. Sure. But there's something that connected so deeply as a youth, and that's why to me, that's why Casino. You're like, man, eh, okay, okay. But that's why Big to me is so dope. It's not that I was like visually stunned. It was like something hit when he hits. The comedy's s- like comedy is a lot like that. Yeah, it because is. Because how I used to get annoyed was when I'd see comedians be like, when I was a kid, I loved. Um, I loved Jack Benny and I loved, <laughs> I loved classic st- st- joke writers and yeah. I, I loved 
Bill Hicks. It's like you got Hicks at eight years old. Mm-hmm. You know who I liked? Robin Williams and Dana Carvey. 100%. And, and Eddie Murphy. Yep. Because they were making noises out of their faces that yeah. made me laugh. And Jim Carrey talked out of his butthole, and I thought it was hilarious. I thought he was a fucking genius. genius. Jim Carrey changed my life. Same. You got to work with him. Yeah, same. He was my boss yeah, for a couple of years. He was li- he literally changed my life when I was a youth, and then I got to meet him as, a, as an adult. Uh, my sister would send me Jim Carrey articles because I was like, him and Dana Carvey were my, and Robin Williams were my guys. God, geniuses, dude. And also, as I got in my teenage years, Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle. Changed. Your, your, well, the comedic changed sensibility me. changed. Times also changed. That's the other thing that people don't know about, don't want to talk about in comedy is like, time changed the way that comedy was received and yeah. developed. So it's just kind of like that 20 year span of comedy was this incredible shift of the beginning of everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was kind of like Kinison era was like learning how to be bold and, and rock and roll style. Right. And, and fuck everyone. And I'll part. Yeah. And then after him, after the Kinison era was kind of like, how can I make a, uh, How can I make less of a character of myself and more of like this comedic um, powerhouse, right? So they were making comedic powerhouses because Kinison was never going to be like a movie star in my opinion. It was just like, but comedic powerhouses started to come along that were just, like Eddie was just undeniable. I remember seeing Eddie Murphy and thinking it was not just the funniest guy I'd seen, but the coolest guy. I'd never seen a cool guy. Like it was was a cool, funny guy. Also like it that, lent itself to the youth where yeah. the youth were like oh stand-up comedy can be for us and then like i, I like remember <clears throat> hbo uh one night stands i love one night St- i used to love one night pat and oswald and dave chappelle's they're the same season yeah they did this thing yep. like around a diner in san francisco yeah and for some reason i would honestly credit that season of the half hour of one night stands for the reason i do stand-up comedy really Pat and Oswald's half hour set. It was Piss Drinkers Inc. Right. Uh, he did Nick Nolte as Han Solo. Mm. He did Cops. Like, mm-hmm. you know, not a lot of people. You, then you find out everyone's doing cop jokes, but it was still a great cop joke. Yeah. Chappelle did um, Alcatraz. Yeah. He's like, I, I got friends in prison I don't even visit. He did the uh, jizz everywhere. Like, I remember his set. Yeah. And it was like, oh, I, it must be the way a guitarist is like, when they hear rock and roll, they're like, I, I, I want to play this. I want to do right. this. It turns you on. It turned me on. And I was just like, this is the shit. And then I would just go to a blockbuster and see what stand up they had and Bernie Mac. And I would find like all this random shit. And I'd be like, they do the Def Jam tapes. And then I would wait for I like, I love the Def Jam tapes. But I would just fuck it. I loved it. And then I remember when I went to Arizona, it was the first time I had internet where you had Ethernet. Yeah. And you could download stuff. Yeah. And my roommate Steve O showed me Kazaa. And the first, Love Kazaa. The first two things I downloaded were porn and stand up. Porn I, a lot of, by the way. Loved. I mean, porn it, really took over. Stand up did happen, but porn was, it was like it was like porn, was porn, 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 stand up. I would have like porn, five porn, bars porn, of porn, 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 porn and like yeah. uh, an exhibit song, and then like, <laughs> and then like I could dance underwater and, then, and yeah, not get wet. And yeah, like, like also, at the speed of life, and then also like Forty uh, Nine highlights from nineteen eighty nine, <laughs> and then but it was a. Uh, but then, like, through Kazaa and downloading stand-up, yeah. then I started downloading Opie and Anthony's. Right, right. Because I was from Denver, and I lived right. in Tucson. I didn't know Opie and Anthony. And then it was like, um, Insomniac was out. Fuck. And then I would listen to, and I would hear the crossover of David Tell and Opie and Anthony. And then I'd find out about young Bill Burr and young Patrice O'Neill. Right. And Bobby and Voss. And then Norton, season two of Last Comic Standing, like, this is my guy. I love him. And then now you're like, when I talk to comics, and they're like, well, I love Hicks and shit. It's like, no, you didn't, dude. You never knew him. You never knew then him. Then you're lying. You never you didn't fall. Because I didn't get into Bill Hicks until I was doing comedy for a year. I didn't, get Bill, I didn't get into Bill Hicks until my solid comedy years of what I started to learn what comedy was. Also, one of the best HBO One Night Stands. Agreed. It's so funny. I, I don't want to be a cheese dick yeah. and do this, but because it's so natural... HBO has done a great thing for comedy and they have for a long time. There's a lot of places to watch and listen to comedy. You have a special. Yeah. That that's out right now. It's Son out. Of, it's yeah. out to you see. Can, you can go, see it right now. You can watch it, it right now. Son stream it right now. It's Son of a Gary. It's just one of the it H look, 
I'm not going to try to do this thing and, and try to pretend like I'm hosting and faking. Yeah. I've always loved you. I've always think you're a phenomenal comedian. I respect you. And HBO is a great place because I think they've always done a, a great job of cultivating people that they really believe in. I, yeah. I, I, I'm not being cheesy. It's just like, yeah, they said look, something to me. They said something to me at um, the taping after the taping where I was like, it's stuck with me. I don't we're, we also know that this business is fake and there's a lot yeah, of it's shit. It's fickle that, as fuck. It doesn't make it. It's, it's bullshit. And, but after the show, I was like, do you guys like that? Because I have a very much an Eddie Adams. In fact, I did. I used to do this to Koppelman and Levine all the time in season one and two of Billions. After I would do a take and they'd check the gate, I would go and I'd be like, was that sexy Jack? Is that sexy Jack? Was that sexy Jack? Because if it wasn't sexy, I can go again. Just as a running joke. Right. But I do have that mentality. And so after I taped... At the Bowery Ballroom, I went up to, you know, Nina and Aaron at HBO and I was like, is that okay? And they're like, we loved it. Great. And then I just was talking and then when I was doing press, Nina comes by and, and sees me and we talk. She's leaving and she's like, we love that you're in the HBO family. And I was like, I'm in a family. I'm in a family? I'm in a family? <laughs> I feel like it's like, you know, when, uh, you know when they do the things where people hear for the first time? It was like one of those reactions. Oh, the colored glasses. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yes, I did. I had a colored glass moment where like, I put it on and I went. The grass is green. Yeah. And they went, what's wrong, Dan? And I went. <laughs> you can't say it. It's blue. And I've never it, seen blue. It's blue. Yeah. And that's why it's always, it's supposed to be blue. Yeah. I had, that's what I felt like being told. But that. that's okay. But look, but and I'm not, I'm not pandering because I, I really do believe this. I think there's a lot of places to see shit and to watch specials and all that stuff. And I'm not trying to discredit Netflix and all that stuff and Amazon, but it is cool to be a part of such an exclusive club. And I think you should be proud. And, and that isn't, it's just what, what a phenomenal way to like make your entrance into that world yeah. with something phenomenal that you've cultivated so hard on like on making wonderful instead of like i do i'm gonna be honest people know i think there's a lot of people that pump out specials for no reason and there's yeah. not a lot of worth behind them and they don't really care and yeah i think money calls a lot and, for I, sure. and and that happens and but um but i do think if you have hbo watch this piece of shit special yes. son of a gary if you don't have hbo get it you can stream it uh, watch Son of a Gary, and um, I promise you won't be disappointed. And if you are, uh, please email Dan Soder. DanSoder.com. There's, Dan, there's a whole link. link. You can we have email a suggestion all the shit. Yeah, and it's a, and start the email with listen, bro, comma, and then whatever yeah, oh, else you God, need to yeah. say. You know what's listen, gonna be funny? <laughs> is we're recording this podcast in it's December of 2019. Yeah. And in March of 2020, yeah. probably at the end of the month, I'm just gonna be at a club. Let's say I'll probably be at Moon Tower Comedy Festival. There you are. You'll be in Austin. I'll be in Austin in early morning, going to the, back to New York. You know, and it's a fun festival, but I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. And I check my email and listen, bro. And I'm like, <laughs> what? Son and of, then it's just son like, of a bitch. this fucker got it me. never ends, dude. It God, never ends. Tatino. So, so do yourself a favor. Please watch Son of a Gary on HBO. Um, this dude's one of my favorite. Fucking comedians, uh, uh, people can wash away from our my my joke of an intro. He's a phenomenal dude, a great comedian. Watch Son of a Gary. Um, if they need to see tour dates and where you're coming up, go to dansoder.com. Yeah, man, it's um, all we'll there. We'll put the link in the description below. Dude, I'm so happy we got to do this. Me too, man. Yeah, I was, yeah. I know you're. I, I was. Shout like, out to the great Ari Shafir. Hundred, my guy. I, I I've never met a guy who cares so little about anything but being a comedian. It it makes me jealous because yeah. he just. Ari will sacrifice literally everything for comedy. Like he'll be like, I don't fuck. I'll lose money for three or four months for comedy. I love he it. Doesn't care. He's the best. I know. I can't do that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm like this best. motherfucker is the guy. All but right. He, so yeah. so so I'm gonna put everything below um, in the description so you guys can know where to go to watch this beautiful con special. Um, and here's what I'm gonna happen. I'm gonna walk away. You're gonna either say a word or a phrase to end the episode. When I get up, say it. Do whatever you got to do. Go ahead. Yeah. Bonding. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. You were that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is.